I would have loved to present this to you. Because it's a whole lot of life of what is needed in this day today. To understand the mystery of the man or woman of God. I, I want to present this subject about the pastoral ministry considering where we are spiritually in this era and time. And I know some of the things I will say here they might be too high for some but I know because they are being recorded they shall greatly benefit generations to come. So I have an agent from the spirit to say it so that I can open more of the eyes so if you can take your notebook the better uh, we will go stage by stage I would have loved a moment where I will talk to you on person person because uh, it's a whole lot of things that is contained First Samuel chapter 3 verse 35 it was in the time when there was challenge when the anointing was losing grip on the people. Eli was missing the point. Then the prophecy was given. But this prophecy was a repetition of what was told Moses when he was leaving Egypt. First Samuel chapter 3 verse number 35. Chapter 2, sorry. Chapter 2 verse 35. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 35. We have more of the reading of the scriptures and i will raise me up a faithful priest so you must know also that they are also priests but they are not what come on talk to me they are not faithful but they are priests that shall do according to that which is in my heart you will know them by their doing not by their saying Come on, come on, get, get, get it clear. This one will not come to say it, will come to do it. The faithful one will be doing what God says, not saying what God says. We are living in a time when we have very good, eloquent preachers who say so many things, yet they are not doing anything of what God says. And in my mind, and I will build him a sure house or a sure ministry. I will build him a sure ministry, a sure calling. When that is happening, I will definitely assure you I will have a ministry established. And he shall walk before me anointed forever. Which means the anointing upon him or upon you shall last forever. It's not a short time anointing. Because number one, he is faithful. He is doing. Faithful and doing to what God says. And then God will build a house and keep an anointing upon him. But also there are, because he said they are faithful, which means there are others who can rise, yet he did not send them. Remember I said this, this stuff might be too high for others, but don't worry. I, I know what he's going to, he, he send me. <laughs> Grab your neighbor's hand and say, I pray for your eyes to open. Say, I pray for your eyes to open. So how then do you know this is a true one? How then do you know this is a true prophet? The first thing is, I said it's not accuracy. No, it's not accurate. That makes that confirms it. 
In today's world, we have people who are very accurate, yet God never sent them. Very accurate. Yet there is nothing from God. Say amen. Amen. Very, very accurate. Yet God has never spoken anything to them. The first thing is their word must come to pass. Their word must come to pass. So the word is going to be given its time for fulfillment. Say amen. Jeremiah chapter number 28 verse 9. Jeremiah 20. Jeremiah chapter number 28, verse 9. So you don't confirm by accuracy, by eloquency, or by seriousness. You don't even confirm it by sincerity. Because sometimes sincerity looks like faith. It's not faith. Sincerity is not faith. Because you can be sincerely lost. So you can't use all those things to measure. You use that the word comes to pass. Say amen to Jesus. Uh, yeah. Number two. Oh, sorry. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say something. I need to say this. This is a very important thing. Jeremiah 29 verse 8. Jeremiah 29 verse 8. You need to see something. That they are not just mere prophets. I need you to see something. When they come to do lies, I need you to get it. That says the Lord of us, the God of Israel. Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to, hearken to your dream which ye cause to be dreamed. They have gone to a worse level. Wait, that when you are among them, they cause you to dream. Unotomu rota chukuna matiri, achitu wia undi. Ugotofunga kutumari ndi yari kukutuma. They cause you to dream a particular dream to cause confusion. And yet you move around thinking God spoke to me. I was not even thinking about it. I never thought about it, but I saw it in a dream. No, they are causing you to dream. So that you can align to their thoughts. There is no God there. Let's discuss this. They cause you to dream. You are not going to be able to do it. You to dream certain dreams. Yet there is no God there. Look at your neighbor say, are you That's getting it right here? Yeah. Eh, eh, let me leave it. Number two. If it's genuine, you will confront sin. If it's genuine, you will confront sin. Jeremiah 35 verse 18. He will confront sin. Verse number 15, sorry. If it's genuine, you will confront sin. He will tell you to repent. He will tell you to leave that relationship. He will tell you to stop it. He will tell you. He will not just say, I see a breakthrough on you. He say, I see a breakthrough, a breakthrough. He will tell you, no, that one is not right. I have sent ye also unto all the servants, my servant, rising up early in the morning, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way. This is a message from a prophet. He's telling you, repent. Come out from your evil way. 
That's a message from a true person. Amend your doings and you go out of out of other goals to save them. Don't go. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop it. Come to Christ. Live a righteous life. That's a sign. You have a true person. Say amen. Another amen. Number three. They have a true passion for your prosperity. They have a true passion for your prosperity. If you read it through the scripture, seeing the life of Moses, you can see a man so committed to see people in Canaan. So committed. The man could do anything to make sure they arrive. So passionate about the prosperity of the people than his own life. And his own life, he was not even considering any of his life. He was so committed to see the people prosper. So determined to see them excel. As the pastor prosper, the believer must prosper. It is evil to have a wide gap in the prosperity of the pastor and the member. Stand up where you are. Look at your neighbor. Say, are you getting this truth? We have to teach them to prosper. I pray for them to prosper. Anoint them to prosper. And cause them to join you in prosperity. If you've got the light, take your seat, take your seat. Number four. Hey, I have to write. My time is... They teach you the word of God. They teach you the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15. I'll give you pastors after my own heart who shall feed you with knowledge. They shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Jeremiah 3 verse 15. Number four, whenever they speak, they speak being moved by the Holy Ghost. They speak being moved by the Holy Spirit. They are not moved by their conviction. They are not moved by their thinking. They are not moved by the circumstance. They are they are moved by the Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter number one, verse twenty-one. Second Peter chapter one, verse twenty-one. Second Peter chapter one, verse twenty-one. They are moved by the Holy Spirit to speak. It's not because they are just excited. It's a seasonal message, or it's a thing that is happening. So people must say no. They are moved. They are prepared to be primitive, to be, to look old-fashioned, and that's, they. Wait for the Holy Spirit to speak to them. For prophets, for the prophets came not in the old time by the will of men. They did not make it to speak. But the holy men of God. First thing is holy. But the holy men, not men. No, 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 it's not men. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. As they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the first base is their pursuit of holiness. Then the next one, the spirit come to move them to speak. Look at your neighbor say, I like that one. Say amen. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. I'm about to finish. So, get this point. Huh? Thou has loved what? Come on, talk to me. Thou has loved what? Louder than that. Thou has loved what? Yes, and he hated what? Iniquity. Therefore, this is the result. God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So, if you want to go higher, you just join those that love righteousness. When you do so, God takes you higher than your classmates. Say amen. 
Number six, sorry. Yeah. Six or five, whatever it is, is a number. You, you know, you get it. <laughs> Don't worry. You shall know them by their fruit. They have to produce a fruit. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. They have to produce a fruit. And Matthew 7, verse 20. They have to produce a fruit. They have to have an evidence that God is with them. They have to have something that convict your heart that God is with this person. So there can be a moment when you can live in doubt and confusion because the fruit is not yet out. But once the fruit is out, you cannot live in doubt. Last number seven. Oh, I think I'll give you just seven, then I <laughs> we go. They allow believers to think. <laughs> and to prove all things. If they are true and genuine, they will allow believers to think and to prove all things. Uh, they don't come with an imposition that you, you don't argue. You don't, no, no. They are free to allow someone to think. They don't feel safe when a question is asked. They don't feel unsafe when a question is asked. They are so comfortable because they have nothing to worry about. Hey. <laughs> hey, uh, look at your neighbor. Say, is the apostle talking to you or me? Romans chapter 12 verse 2. <laughs> I have some scriptures that I need to give you yet. So, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. But be ye not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. You need a renewed mind for you to be able to prove that which is good. I didn't say it's if. Did you hear that one? I didn't say you prove it because it's evil. It is good. It is acceptable. And it is perfect. And this is the will of God. Those things, those qualifications does not stop a believer to reason. It is good. It is acceptable. It is perfect. But if you have a renewed mind, not all minds, not all minds, renewed, renewed. I'm going to say that Zako Fungwa Zika Zaranyama, it is a renewed mind. So not all that are in the church can prove anything. But those with a renewed mind can prove it. Say amen to Jesus. So work on your renewal of the mind. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. So you renew your mind. Not to argue with the man of God. No. To weigh the truth. And this I pray. That your love may abound yet more and more. In the knowledge and in all judgment. Your love is going to increase more and more, more and more in the knowledge. Your love must increase in knowledge. It has to grow because you are seated in knowledge. Verse number 10. That ye may prove things that are excellent. Remember, they are not evil. They are excellent. Yet they still want you to prove them. Because your confidence, your safety, your belief is at peace when you have proved it. That ye may be sincere. <laughs> because you cannot be sincere on what you never proved. That you may be sincere and without offense. 
until the day of Christ. You will not be moving up and down. You have proved this is the right word. This is the right season. This is the truth. I have no way to go to look for another thing. I got it right. You are no longer moving up and down because you have proved this is the truth. This is the man of God. This is the word of God. This is the right word. This is the truth. You have nothing to worry now. You are sincere about it. Say amen. Another amen. First Thessalonians chapter number 2, 5 verse number 20. First Thessalonians chapter number 5 verse 20. Did I help someone today? May the Lord help me. Okay. Despite, despise not prophesying. <laughs> Don't despise it. Despite what I taught you, don't despise prophesy. Because the whole Bible is prophetic. Yet, I taught you all this. But don't despise prophesy. Don't carry an attitude that look down upon prophets. Because looking down upon a prophet is looking down upon your destiny. Don't go that level. Yeah. Hmm, this man, what is he trying to happen? <laughs> Verse number 21. But I know I'm helping someone. <laughs> Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. While you are doing that, let them prophesy. You, because now you have the light, you now you have a measuring stick. You now have a gauge. You now know how to go about it. When they prophesy, you say, mm, 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 mm. that's a good one. Mm, mm. But, Jesus, I needed to go and look at the scripture and find further to see whether it is in sync with what he said. You prove all things. You prove all things. All things. You prove them. Even that which is good, you prove it. If you are not safe for a believer to prove what you said, it means you know you are fake. Why, why, what makes you worry? What is your insecurity? You spoke on behalf of God. The word is God's and the people are God's people. The time is God's time. So what is your worry? What is your worry? If God spoke to you, the word will come to pass. And they can prove it by themselves. So let them be. Say amen. Another amen. You should prove all things. All things. All things. Hold. Once you get it, don't let it go. Hold fast to that which is true. Hold fast. Don't let it go. Look at your neighbor say, ah, Kwanas. Zaita. It's done. All that I'm doing, I'm preparing you for times ahead. I'm preparing you for times ahead. That you will be able to navigate in any discussion, whether industry, home or village, wherever you are, you now know how to read and look at scripture. You now know. You now know. You now know. If someone comes to prophesy you and create fear in you, that's not prophecy. 